and welcome to my Anagams Art YouTube channel. Uh, this week is going to be something a little bit different from last week. So last week was my cityscapes and this week I'm going back to seascapes and it's a really nice pastel one for you to see. And I'm going to be, because it's on a small canvas, I'm going to be shooting it quite close to the camera so you can really, really see some of the details and I'll do some close-up bits too so you can really, really get to grips with uh, what I'm doing when I'm doing it with the palette knife and with my hands, etc, etc. So it's really really detailed and I hope that that will be interesting to see. I say this every time but please please do like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Um, the subscription button is literally just down there, just click it, click it now. Have you done it? Good, fantastic, thank you. Um, it's really really helpful for me because it helps new people find the videos and encourages me to make new content so it is a win-win situation. Most importantly though I really really hope that you enjoy the video so there you go. So as per usual I am marking out the landscape and you'll notice that the horizon line is just below halfway down the painting although it probably looks more like half just because of the angle that I'm showing it at but yeah it's just it's just below half um, and that's it the sky gets a little bit more of a feature in the painting. I'm starting as I normally do by painting the sunset area and the very concentrated section of the sky and it's just really important to get those colours right, really really important so that's usually what I start with first. So I'm using my hands which I really really often do and that is to get a smooth texture with the sky and to make that gradation from the intense yellow from the purple and then to the azure kind of almost turquoise colour and it's to make that gradation really smooth. So I'm using my hands, I've got three different colours there that I'm blending. So it looks like the sky is sort of exploding from the centre and I'm making sure that those lines are blurry and they're not sharp because when you look at kind of clouds the most beautiful sunsets are often when you have this array of colours that sort of merge into one another so that's what I'm trying to do there. The reason that these colours work so well together is because that yellowy colour has a little bit of pink in it and that pink is the magenta that I've used so it looks a tiny bit orange it's not just pure yellow and white it's a little little bit of pink in it and I use that magenta as well on the lilac colour that is next um, up so that it blends into so basically I'm there's a there's a crossover colour and that is the magenta and because I've used it in both those colours they're going to be tonally synchronised and that's why they look good blended together, also because they are the same hue of lilac and yellow. They also work because those two colours can match up because they're not too dark and not too light against each other. So the next colour up is that turquoise colour in the background and the reason the purple and the turquoise work so well is for a similar reason, they're the same hue and they have the same tonal value but also I've used an ultramarine in both those shades of colour so when they're blended together the the colours that I've used to mix them so that ultramarine that is uh, unique to both of those colours does blend really nicely and to the eye it looks like they have um, they can they're matching they can sort of blend into one another because they have that same pigment in them and that really really is the basis for what colours I choose what colours are going to look blended so it wouldn't be the same if I was to use a red and green because it's going to make a really weird sludgy brown colour so it has to be really carefully chosen and I base it on how I've mixed those colours together and the properties of those colours. Now working my way down the piece and really forming those rocky landscapes and it's important to get these done and dusted quite early on and the reason for that is that um, they are going to be really important for shaping the painting and, and the composition. So once I've decided where the rocks are going to be and what shapes they're going to be, then I can start mapping out the rest of the painting and the composition so that it all balances. Because if those rocks are slightly out of sync with the rest of the painting, it's going to really throw it off. So depending on how big the rocks are, depends on the rest of the landscape and the painting in the second half of the picture at the bottom process is quite similar and what I'm really doing is I'm using a paintbrush to do the background of the cliffs and those colours and then I'm using a palette knife to go over and sort of give a bit of texture and depth to that rocky landscape so it sort of looks a bit 3D, it looks like you could sort of climb on it, you know, kind of grab it and rocks are sort of falling off and it looks really textural so I'm using a brush as you can see here on the right hand side, I'm using a brush to do that flat colour 
and then I'm going to use that palette knife and as I'm doing now and that is to really sculpt in the design of the rocks and as I said the texture and the 3D effect which is really really important. Despite the magenta and the yellow that I have used, I've used them in really, really small quantities, I am sticking to a very cool palette, so the rocks are going to have that almost citrusy green in them and that sort of turquoise, that aquamarine colour offset and complemented by that cooler background as well that I'm using, the yellows and the purples and the aqua colour. You can see me here begin to map out the composition and as I said it's really important to get those hills and mountains set in stone before I start to do that because it's going to affect the one's going to affect the other so I'm just mapping out the composition here and I've got a sort of thick dark area to the bottom left hand corner and that is going to be balanced by the clouds I'm going to put in at the end and you'll see me do that and right now I'm just building up the underneath layer of those rocks and you can afford to be a little bit more generous with the paint here and a little bit harsher with those shadows because the darker rocks and the thicker rocks on the left hand side it almost creates like a shadowy look so I can be a little bit more um, daring with that underneath colour where it's the, sort of the shoreline but because it's sort of mirroring the rocks it can be a little bit thicker, thicker than it is on the opposing side. So now I'm just building up that bottom area and I'm again sticking to quite a cool palette but I am introducing these more warmer tones of red and it's unbleached titanium white mixed with a little bit of yellow and that creates a very earthy uh, tone which I really really enjoy using and that's because it sort of mirrors the yellow of the sunset without it being too bright at the bottom and also reflects that really natural look of the shore and, and the foliage at the bottom. It's also really important that this area doesn't look too flat because it's in the foreground so you can afford to build it up a little bit more and that's where the palette knife comes in handy and you'll notice that whenever I'm doing those sort of 3D areas and, and sort of sculpting the paint I always use the knife because it's so much easier and once you've sort of trained your hand in how to use it it can be a fantastic tool and so I'm just sort of thickening the paint making sure that it looks sort of 3D and textural and also making sure that it doesn't steal focus away from the focal point which is the centre and the sunset which you'll see me do in a second and I'll talk about that as I'm doing it. This textural area to the bottom left hand corner, so I'm using sort of reds and browns and as I said earthy colours and greens and what I'm going to do to sort of soften those harsh, the mixture of those harsh colours together is get the paintbrush, dip it in some yellow paint really really dilute it with some white spirit and just blow on the paintbrush and create that flicky splattery effect and that almost dulls the connection of those colours so basically what I mean is that where there's harsh lines between where I've used one colour and another colour and it looks too um, obviously uh, put together or the shading isn't it's not quite blended or you know whether I'm looking at the browns and the earthy colours when it doesn't look that it's blended enough, if you use a sort of overlay of splattery yellow or even a different colour, it can really soften the look of something and that's what I think really works there because it doesn't detract too much from the sunset which is a very very undiluted and concentrated colour. You can see now I'm working on the right hand side and I'm sort of being careful here not to introduce too many new colours to this bit just because it's got enough going on with the purple and the little bits of hints of pink towards the edges of the sky and also with those warm browns and even that little bit of orange that is reflected in the mountains in the water so just below the horizon line basically is where I'm talking about so if I introduce too many colours at this stage it's going to lose its tonal integrity and it's going to over complicate the piece quite drastically so I am just really really sticking to those cooler colours and just introducing very very slight flicks of colours but I am still keeping the tonal values there because I'm including those specific colours like the magenta like the little bits of orange and the yellow I'm including those in when I'm mixing new colours so that the basis of the new colours is exactly the same the whole way through so when I'm mixing those peaches and those blues although they are different colours and they have different balances and ratios of those sort of foundation colours the, the, the pinks and the blues and as I was talking about earlier they are going to look different but they are going to maintain a sort of tonal harmony because 
the basic uh, basis of those colours is all the same. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So this bit I'm working on now is the reflection part, and this is probably one of my favourite parts because it's fairly simple to do, um, but it but it really is effective at the end. So because obviously there's that gradation of colour in the sky, I'm going to try and replicate that below, which means starting off with that yellowy colour towards the centre and then bringing it down to the purple, and then eventually we're going to get to the sky colour, which I'm even going to make even darker because it is water. Um, and it's just about mirroring that balance, but because obviously the rest of the painting isn't mirrored, it stops it looking too uh, sort of simplistic and too two-dimensional because there are differences between the top and the bottom half of the painting, but it still sort of comes together as one and looks whole because those colours are mirrored in the top and bottom of the painting. So I know I'm always talking about balance, but this is particularly integral at in this particular part. So. You can see me working on it here with that darker area in the foreground in the bottom right hand corner. I'm dragging that dark green colour towards the centre of the piece because it's almost creating a conversation with the opposing bottom left hand corner because that almost dips in, it's, it's concave at the bottom left hand corner. So it's sort of to make the gap look, you know, to make that conversation between the different areas of the painting work, I then sort of dragged out the other side so there's movement going on there is the flow of shapes and of course that overall balance which I talk about far too much but <laughs> it's very very integral um I'm now using the drippy technique yay <laughs> uh, to sort of really add those vertical lines to what is a predominantly horizontal picture because obviously the horizon line is so very strongly horizontal and also the shorelines and those bits of foliage coming in and it's all very horizontally accented I am adding horizontal lines, those drips really, really create a harmony and a conversation between the vertical and the horizontal, which helps to balance, once again, the uh, painting. I zoomed in here on the part where I do the light and the sunset part, which is my favourite bit, um, where I just get a really, really thick white and yellow as well, um, bit of paint on the palette knife, and I creates that textured sunset and it's just a little dot but it's really really effective because it gives the eye something to settle on and it creates a focal point so there is me doing it there and then I drag down that light and the colour which again is really really important for the balance you can see me do it there and it's the reflection of the light because it's a very very obvious and strong vertical accent against a very predominantly horizontal piece as I said earlier so it's just about that balance and creating harmony in the geometrics of the piece. So this part I thought would be interesting to see because it involves me going over and redoing the clouds that I put in. So the clouds are really really important to the piece because they are going to balance what is quite a heavy um, side of the picture on the left hand side so they're going to balance it out on the right hand side. Um, and I'm using purple because it's sort of a colour where it is part of the painting but it's not in a very um, prominent position and I'm using that magenta as I said before to make sure that it tonally works as an entire picture so I am just sort of playing around working out where the clouds should go and sort of standing back looking at how the balance is, whether it works to the eye when I look at it and all that's really going on there is I'm just sort of having a conversation with myself thinking does that work and funnily enough I can tell immediately when it doesn't work and when it does and there's that sort of magical moment where you think yep that works that's in the right place but before it gets to that there are sort of umming and ahhing and changing around of things until it looks balanced. But I thought it'd be interesting to see because it just goes to show that you are still learning when you're doing a piece and you know you might not get it right the first time but you know it's really really important to keep going and trying different things and seeing how it works as a whole and what I'm really doing is I'm, I've got a flat colour of purple that I'm using for the clouds and then I am just going over it a little bit with a palette knife to give it that 3D effect and just making sure that it balances and what's really interesting is it balances in diagonals here so the right hand corner where I'm doing those clouds is balancing with the bottom left hand corner and the simplicity of the bottom right hand corner is balanced out with the complexity of the hills on the top right hand side, sorry top left hand side, <laughs> sorry that was complicated, um, but yes it balances in diagonals and 
At the moment I'm just using that palette knife to create a little bit of interest in the background and add a bit of life to the overall painting. And once again I am really capitalising on those vertical lines and I'm using the edge of my palette knife to create a really thin line that almost looks like a sail or, you know, um, rigging of some kind and yeah, that's to just hint that there's more going on in the background, give it some life, give it some detail, but it doesn't have to be accurate because it's so far away, it's distance creating to keep it quite vague, so that's also something that I do with the palette knife. So there's just some little edits going on and that is the final piece, I really hope you enjoyed watching. And there it was. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint that and please like and subscribe before you go and yeah, see you next week.